a video recently about the death of Katrin Kumar. Ben Yin was interviewing a nurse who was one of the witnesses, who was a witness at the time she died. And I watched the video thrice. Katrin Kumar had an open heart surgery. December 26th, 1975. And after the surgery, she was in ICU from that time till about February when she finally passed on. I've got the name of the hospital. She was there. And why she was there? was a nurse on duty at that time and she mentioned her final words to her and the lady scribbled it I'll come back to that but something very striking there was a young nurse at the time of her death she was in coma for some hours they put respirators so the machines plugged on her and at about 1 19 a.m. February 20th, 1976. The young nurse was in the room and she looked at Katrin Kuma on the bed. She noticed that the respirator at that point wasn't really working anymore. The machines, everything plugged to her wasn't working. So she stepped forward to touch her body. As soon as she got close to Katrin Kuma, all the powers in the hospital went off. And as she stood in front of Katrin Kuma, as she touched her hands, her heart, to read her pulse, immediately she saw flashes of lights. The whole hospital, there was no single power. Flashes of light was right there in her ward. And at the moment she felt, oh, maybe there was a circuit breaker, something, that probably the light came on and went off again or something. As she started to touch the other part of her body, the light that flashed before came up again. Like, what's going on? And it's something very amazing. She touched the body. It was neither warm nor cold. She couldn't understand the temperature. And she quickly she called for her supervisor, the head of the nurses. And she called the supervisor and like, see what she's experiencing. She saw flashes of light twice in the room. The nurse said, but there's no power in the hospital. Where are you seeing lights? So I can't understand. I don't. Then, I, then she now said, but it looks like she's dead. The nurse said to her, like, don't you know when a patient dies? She said she's confused because she can't feel the right temperature. And then the head nurse found a way. There was the power breakout. As she was getting close to Katrin Kuma's room, she started smelling a fragrance that smelled like roses. The smell was so intense. Then she got into the room where Kachukuma's body was. She said, why am I smelling roses? So intense. It's coming more intense from this particular room. And the young nurse, she asked the young nurse, I said, I can perceive something. But the other nurse could identify the actual smell. And somehow her PA came in. Her name is Maggie. She came into the room. And the head nurse checked and they confirmed her there. Meanwhile, the young nurse was an unbeliever. Just follow me. She confirmed her dead, and the Maggie came in and all of that. Then the nurse that had transferred duty to this young nurse came on board as well. They were all in her room. And the, the other nurse asked the young nurse, at what time did she die? The nurse said, it looks like she died. This time around, she was standing in the room with a country coma for two hours. So it looks like she died exactly 1.19 a.m. And they looked at the dates. It was February 25th. And the nurse exclaimed. She looked at her notes. She said, these were her final words Why she was alive when I was on duty. He said, love, love Jesus. And she said something else. He said, I will die on the 25th of February, 1976, by 1.15 a.m. Exact words. And she said, bury me with roses 
on my funeral and this was the exact fragrance that the head nurse was perceiving that was not the only visual thing that happened Holy Ghost is a person Holy Ghost, he has a mind I'm saying it so that you can enjoy communion you can enjoy fellowship with him he has a mind Romans 8 verse 27 NKJV Romans 8 verse 27 NKJV now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is <laughs> the Holy Ghost has a mind because the spirit intercedes before God now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is he has a mind and he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of god the holy spirit has a mind and that is why he's always thinking about you as a mind number two he can be grieved these are some of the personalities of the holy spirit he can be grieved Ephesians 4 verse 30 NKJV and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God because he's a person he can be grieved he offended and blaspheme against the Holy Spirit and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption he can be grieved three he speaks another personality of the Holy Spirit is that he speaks Acts 8 verse 29 NKJV Acts chapter 8 29 and the Spirit said to Philip go near and overtake this chariot then the Spirit said to Philip he speaks that is why you must be attentive to hear what he's saying by time because he speaks Revelation 2 verse 7 NKJV he was an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches he was an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches he speaks John 16 verse 13 however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into our truth for he will not speak are you saying it on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he can't guide you without speaking you're the one who sometimes shuts your ears to what he's saying. As one of the personalities of the Holy Spirit, he speaks. He will tell you things to come so that you are not confused. He guides you so you are not misguided by speaking to you. Before he sees. He sees. First Corinthians 2 verse 10 New King James Version But God has revealed them to us through his spirits For the spirit searches all things Can you search if you're not seeing? Huh? For the spirit searches all things Yes! The deep things of God The Holy Ghost sees he helps us to search he searches everything about us because he sees what are the significant signs of the Holy Spirit the significant signs some of the significant signs of the Holy Spirit somehow in the course of this meeting we've experienced some and we experience more just make sure that you're not distracted in any form Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 
Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4, NKJV, KJV, King James Version. KJV, Acts chapter 2, 1 to 4. Now when, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, two. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. Three. And there appeared unto them, there was an appearance, cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with all the tongues as the Spirit gave them all trance. Three signs, three significant signs from this scripture. Number one, the audible sign. The audible sign, which is in his power. The powerful audible sign, the audible sign in the expression of his power two the visual sign showing his presence visual sign number one audible sign two the visual sign showing his presence three verbal sign verbal sign which means utterance proclamation let me go to the first one which is the audible sign in his power he says in Acts 2 verse 2 he says suddenly there came a sound that is audible there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting a sound when the the Holy Ghost invades a man when he comes in to a place you will hear sound you will hear loud noise and many times in refresh we have had this experience sometimes the loud the, 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 the sound chokes you you can't control yourself it hits you very hard you see yourself vibrating you see yourself shaking in an unusual way that's the power of the Holy Ghost Sometimes you hear like a loud wind, very loud. That is a forceful expression of the Holy Spirit. It comes in form of a wild wind, very thick. It feels like you have this cold. You can't explain. Sometimes it's on your hands, literally. Your hands are vibrating. Your body is shaking. Your mouth is moving in an uncontrollable manner. Sometimes it gets to your leg. This sound comes with its virus expressions the audible sign comes in his power it filled all the house where they were sitting even in your homes when you dwell you feel it the wind blows if you're very attentive you are silent deep down your gaze is on him you feel this loudness. Have you ever been in a situation that looks like your door is moving? Sometimes it feels like your door, everything is shaking around you. Bearing. It's just like something entered you. You feel this breeze, window, curtains blowing. And you ask him to saturate you with his power. This is one of the signs you experience. I remember person who attended refresh one of the months she left refresh venue she said my it looks like breeze followed me i wasn't sick nothing it was feeling like fever but it wasn't fever i was shaking all through the night on my bed i was shaking my bed was shaking i couldn't explain it because the feelings are so unexplainable sometimes and she was shaking she said, Mama, she sent me a message. I cannot understand why my hands are vibrating. And the way it is, at the same time I'm feeling cold on my inside. Sometimes it can come very loud. You're hearing a tingling feel inside your ear is shaking. 
that's the power of the Holy Ghost. John 3 verse 8. It says the wind blows where it wishes. It comes in form of a wind. As we saw in Acts chapter 2. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it. But cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The wind blows. You can't tell. I've experienced it severally. Communion with the Holy Spirit is so sweet. There are moments you long for every day. You'll be in your room, your communion, and you feel this loudness that you can't explain. Just all over your room. But you don't know where it's coming from. As a wind of the Holy Ghost. Number two, visual sign. Second significant sign of the Holy Spirit. Visual sign. Acts 2 verse 3 says, They appeared unto them, appearance, unto them, cloven tongues like as fire, like as of fire, like as of fire. It appeared unto them and sat upon each of them. A visual sign, you will see it to feel like lights in your room. I've seen it, I've seen it severally in refresh. Or if it flashes of fire, you feel fire, you just see it, it appears. And you can't control yourself. It's visuals, the visual sign. That's its presence all over. You see it, but you can't explain what you're really seeing. Sometimes you close your eyes and everywhere is dark. You see these lights. You're like, where is this light coming from? That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. Exodus 3 verse 2. It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire fire or the bush was not consumed that's the presence it comes in form of fire you see it 